morning. Welcome to Christmas worship. Yes, this is the day after Christmas Day, but Christmas is a 12-day season, and it is still Christmas Day. And that's the wonderful thing about this season. So I hope you are having a wonderful, blessed season. I hope it's just the start of it, and I hope you have many, many, many more days of celebration together with your family. A couple of announcements before we begin, just to remind you, a few of our activities at the church are kind of on hiatus for the Christmas break. There will not be a 10.45 a.m. service this Sunday or next Sunday, only a 9.30 a.m. service. There will also will not be a Tuesday Bible study. You won't find one here at the church. You won't find it online. So if you really have to have your fix of a Bible study, go back and watch something that you've never watched before. There are ample number of Bible studies back on our queue, back on the, um, the website, or our, our, pardon me, our, our, our uh, YouTube channel, that you'd be welcome to find something, I'm sure. I'm sure you'll find something that you haven't watched before. So please do that, but it'll be the next two weeks, the next two Tuesdays, there will not be a Bible study, nor will there be a, an in-person Bible study either. There will be no youth group the next two Mondays, and we will uh, not resume that until January, I believe it's the 10th, I think that's second Monday. Also, please note that we'll be resuming Sunday school sometime in uh, January. We're not sure exactly the date. Probably later in January. We also have a couple of congregational meetings coming up. Lots of things going on. Busy, busy, busy. Lots of things starting in the new year. But right now, I just want you to relax. Enjoy your time with your family. Enjoy the service today. So let us prepare our hearts as we sing our opening hymn. Lo, how a rose air blooming.
begin our service, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us make confession of our sin this day, recognizing that we are not worthy of the gift that Christ has given to us, but yet he gives it to us anyway. So in the name of the Father who began and continues the universe, who broke into the world, that we in our Son, who gives life and love, and in the name of the Holy Spirit who makes our community different from others, and children of love to the world. Amen. Amen. Let us admit that we have not approached this Christmas unspoiled by the commercialism and its misguided nonsense that pretends to be the Christmas spirit. Lord, we are sorry about the mess into which you have been placed. Forgive us for being so bound to the rush and to the marketplace of Christmas that we no longer see you. Each of us must admit that we have smothered Christ in the nostalgia and sentimentality of Christmas's past. We have locked Christ into the cradle at Bethlehem, where, as a harmless baby, he cannot make a claim on our life and change us. We admit that we see Christmas as a story from the past and that we rarely let Christ out of the cradle, celebrating him as our present and coming Lord. We think that we celebrate Christmas well when we sing the carols and practice our traditional festivities. The true meaning of Christmas is often buried beneath our traditions. God is ready to forgive. As often as, as, uh, God is ready to forgive our wrongs and to transform our lives into a life of celebration and service. You have been born anew into God's love and free to see the true meaning of Christmas Day. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light, enkindled in our hearts, may shine forth in our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the holy, unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The gospel lesson for today is found in the book of Luke, the second chapter. When the time came for the purification according to the law of Moses, they brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And so they offered a sacrifice according to what is started, stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves, two young pigeons. And so now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. So guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple. And when the parents brought the child, Jesus, uh, Jesus, to do for him what was customary under law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God and said, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in all the presence of all peoples, a light to the revealed revealed to the Gentiles for the glory of your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what had been said about this boy. But Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword shall pierce your own soul as well. There is also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher, she was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and as a widow, as a widow uh, to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. And at that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, open up our hearts to your word this day that we might be inspired by your presence, for he asks us in Jesus' name. Amen. It is amazing that people who came out to greet Jesus, his parents, eight days afterwards, they brought him for the ritual of circumcision, a, pure, a pure time of purification. The mother was finally officially designated clean. All these rituals, all these religious traditions, these trapments that they followed faithfully, but interestingly, this Jesus would put an end to it. I am here to tell you and confess to you today, we all have superstitions and traditions that hem us in and prevent us from living a fulfilled life. Oftentimes, they are religious traditions. We are afraid that, oh no, if I do this, God is going to send me to hell. Oh no, if I step out of line, look out. We create these traditions and rituals by which we must follow in order to be worthy of the kingdom of heaven. And if that's how you are living your life, you don't understand what Christmas is about. What Christmas is all about is Jesus coming and putting to end to all of those traditions, all of those rituals, all of those entrapments that keep you in prison and keep you from enjoying a relationship with God. You are supposed to be set free. It doesn't mean that you do whatever you want to, but it means we're no longer bound by these traditions and by these rituals and by all these legalisms. We just live a life of love. And, you know, sometimes people who love each other, well, we make mistakes. So what do you do when you make mistakes? Oh, I'm sorry, we should just get divorced because I, you can't love me anymore. That's stupid. But that's how we act in our relationship with God, isn't it? Oh, no, God, you might divorce me, send me to hell. No, that's not the way God works. We make a mistake. He picks you up. He dusts you off and says, okay, do better next time. And guess what? Sometimes you don't do better next time. But God still loves us. Sometimes we make the same mistakes over and over again. It's a growing process. It's a relationship with God. I'm inviting you to the freedom that you have in Christ. Not to go and do whatever you want to. But just to live your life. Just live your life. Be free from the burdens of tradition and ritual. All of those things that have hemmed you in and bound you. Those things that make you afraid. Oh, that you might lose your salvation. Just stop. God is good. 
You've been saved. It's nothing that you have done, but it's an event that was done 2,000 years ago and is taking place once again today. For today is your moment of salvation, for God has set you free. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for setting us free this day by the gift of Jesus Christ. We ask that you again would release us from all of those traditions that would hem us in and keep us from enjoying the fullness of a relationship with you. You're not here to judge us or condemn us. You're here to set us free from those type of bonds. Let us live freely indeed. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us sing together right flesh and dwelt amongst us full of grace and truth Jesus, Jesus was, was born, born as I was born God I took my form and became a man him. behold the Lamb of God which takes away the sin of the world I, I am a sinner, sinner. I, I deserve to die for my sin, sin. Jesus, Jesus was born to take my place for God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life Jesus was born that I might have life. And Mary gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Jesus chose the lowest form of birth in order to go through all humility and suffering for me. There was with an angel a multitude, a heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, on earth peace, goodwill to all people. Glory to God in highest, for he brings life to me and to all believers. And Joseph rose and took the child of Jesus and his mother by night and departed to Egypt. They remained there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord by a prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Long ago, God called his people from Egypt to flee for them from slavery. When God called Christ out of Egypt, he freed me from slavery to sin. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. And I belong to God. I am his child, because Christ made me free. Jesus himself bore our sin in his body on a tree. Jesus paid for my sins with his blood. Jesus bought me back from sin. God, who is rich in mercy for his great love by which he loves us, even when we were dead in sin, made us alive together with Christ, and raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Christ, Christ rose from the dead, so that we might have life. 
In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. He created me. He created me anew through Christ's death and resurrection. He created me anew through baptism. We are buried with Christ by baptism into death. As Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. I am baptized. I belong to God. I am God's child. For unto us is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Jesus was born as I was born, that I might live in Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks again for the new life that we have in Jesus Christ. We just read a, a litany of lessons about in our, in our confession today, about what it is you've done for us. You've set us free, God. Those of us who are set free, let's not go back into that bondage anymore. Help us to live our lives in a manner that's pleasing to you. And when we fail, God, we ask your forgiveness. Restore us and continue to restore us our relationship with you. And let us use this restored relationship to restore ourselves our relationships with one another. We pray for your peace and your healing to be upon your world today. And so we just take a moment of silent prayer to lift all those concerns that we have, those who have been broken in body and spirit, those who have been broken in relationship. We just take this moment to lift those concerns and put them in your care and keeping this day. In your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all those for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Receive the Lord's blessing this day then. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you in favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing together our closing in. Angels from the realms of glory.
Christ, go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.